Hello, one and all. Welcome to another episode of You Have My Attention. My name is Ellie, and today I'm here to discuss some things that have my attention this week. This week, it's all about the holiday season, mainly Christmas. So here in the U.S., uh, Christmas is a holiday that is very ingrained in the American culture. It's difficult to not notice it happening, and in fact, we usually start to see glimpses of it as far back as October, when all the stores start to put out Christmas-themed merchandise and decors and gift sets. Some people find this annoying. Uh, Honestly, sometimes I do, but there are those that like to plan well in advance, so they prefer it. And I accept that some feel... Some people feel the need to start early, but I personally choose not to partake in decorations or gift wrapping until after Thanksgiving out of respect for Thanksgiving. And I don't start listening to Christmas music on purpose in my spare time for fun until December usually. Now, when it comes to gift giving, most people will probably tell you that the smartest strategy is to Start early and pay attention throughout the year to the things that your friends, your family, loved ones tell you or hint at wishing to get as a gift. I really try to do my best at that, but sometimes I forget to write these ideas down. And so I tend to find most of my gifting ideas by visiting stores in person or online and trying to remember previous conversations. But... There have been times when I've looked at gift guides for some inspiration and I don't actually think I've bought, like ever bought the exact item in a gift guide, but they have really helped me figure out what I want to look for. So this all brings me to turn my attention to a famous gift guide released by Oprah's publishing team. I've known of Oprah for a long time. I know I've watched some episodes of her show a handful of times. It's been some years since the show went off the air, but her production and media company are still going strong today from what I understand. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm a huge, enormous fan of hers, but this year I am a bit curious about her gift guide. And I decided that I wanted to go through it and share what I think about it as I do that. So it's called Oprah's Favorite Things. Her editing team compiles a list of items that they choose to include in this gift guide every year and they call it Oprah's favorite things. It's kind of a little play on the famous Christmas song uh my favorite things or favorite things I think from the sound of music. So I'm at the top of the screen for this uh Oprah's favorite things guide. I can tell they put a lot of time and thought into this. I honestly really wonder uh, how much Oprah's team makes from this list uh, every year. I did find a disclaimer at the bottom that stated that they may earn a commission from the affiliate links on the page. So this is pretty common with gift guides. Uh, If you think about it, it's a really clever marketing opportunity for the brands that are featured. This year, her list is uh, seems uh, to be presented in partnership with the e-commerce behemoth known as Amazon. And it doesn't surprise me uh, because shopping in general has really become very internet-based. I, mm, I'd say I, I tend to prefer shopping in person whenever possible. And part of that is because I have been known to be somewhat of a procrastinator when it comes to holiday shopping, admittedly. Um, Usually I come up with some ideas I want to give someone and and let those ideas marinate for a few days, sometimes a few weeks if I have the time luxury for it. But I think that's usually not the case. I know I've heard that some people will wait until the sometimes the very last minute. Uh, I really, okay, I recently, not until recently actually, was not aware of the number of stores that were open on Christmas Eve because in my family, we usually start getting together to celebrate on Christmas Eve and then we just continue our celebrations into Christmas Day. So because of that, I technically, and like my family too, 
um, have until December 23rd as our hard deadline to figure all this out and get all the wrapping done and all that stuff. But yeah, ideally, I'd like to be done a few days before so that I have time to make sure I have everything I need and I can get everything ready and wrap everything the way I want to. Now, my approach to wrapping gifts is to try to make it as eco-friendly as possible. Um, So usually I try to recycle wrapping materials as much as I can and I try to keep what I use to a minimum. I know there's a lot of ways people can do this. Some people get really creative. Anyway, back to Oprah's list. I'm just going to go through this list and share my thoughts as I scroll through it. I see there are a few different sections that they've prepared. They kind of split this list into like these different areas. So it looks like the editing team divided it into 10 categories. So the categories are stylish gifts, book gifts, cozy gifts, kitchen gifts, beauty gifts, children gifts, wellness gifts, home gifts, food gifts, and tech. So in this first section, it looks like it's like clothes and stuff, leggings. This is kind of steep for leggings. They have these leggings, $70 at Amazon. Uh, I don't know about other people, but I feel like that's kind of steep. I actually have been needing leggings. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of them because I don't like wearing tight pants. I don't know. It's just not my vibe. But uh, looks like these have some decent pockets. Uh, a couple of different color options. There's some glasses, so like readers. Yeah, I guess people like to get a little uh, fashionista with their reading glasses. May as well, right? Make something, make something fun out of it. There's a jumpsuit. A jumpsuit. What? Why? Okay, I I'm not a jumpsuit person personally because I kind of find it uh, inconvenient. Uh, you know when you have to. Um, use the restroom and take it off and all that i mean it looks comfortable to wear in a sense but also impractical it says that it, this one apparently has like a, a good zipper that makes it easy to like use it for the bathroom and stuff i don't know i'd still rather have pants and a top personally but to each their own i guess let's see they have gloves i think that's a fair price for gloves i mean that's reasonable 18 dollars. not bad i guess a phone bag i don't know like I don't see myself using a phone bag. I'd rather use a pocket or just put it in my purse. But I guess if you want to like travel light, it can come in handy. Just carry the very essentials. I guess it can be a good gift. We have these earrings that are $88. They're like pearl earrings, but they look like they're trying to be like the modern pearl where the pearl isn't even like a perfect circle. This kind of makes me think about pearl necklaces. I know they were really the thing back in the day. I. I remember having to wear them for like concert concerts in like middle school and high school. Yeah, when we had our concerts, we had to wear our uh, formal attire, but it was like a uniform version of formal formal attire. I did wear pearl, like a pearl necklace at one point and pearl earrings. I like the earrings more. The the necklace is a little like not my not my vibe so much. But these pearl earrings are that I wouldn't wear them personally. I'm not the type to wear that kind of uh, avant-garde, I guess. I, maybe if I were to see them on a person, I got to click on this and see where it takes me. Let's see. It pulls up Amazon. Do they have a picture? I don't see a picture of someone wearing them. See, that really helps. When you see someone wearing, you can see like, does this look like something that will look good on me? You know, online, that's very important because you want to try to only buy things that you, you know, you want to try to limit your returns because that whole process is annoying. Interesting though that when I clicked on this link to see the the item, there's only seven ratings and the average of those ratings is two stars. So I think the people that bought them so far that have posted reviews, they don't like them. Uh, <laughs> one comment even says they're, they're really big and ugly. Another one says that they're mismatched. I guess... I mean, that's kind of the point. These earrings aren't supposed to look uniform. They're not supposed to look like your typical earrings. They're supposed to look a little a little different, you know, not even matching each other. But um, this person feels like the sizing is off between the two. So they're like, no, I don't 
I don't know how people like these. And I see the picture. I kind of see what they mean, but they don't look that different. It's just... Yeah, not everyone's going to be into this whole mismatched situation. So I get it. I wouldn't buy them personally. There's other like travel stuff here. A coat. A tote bag. Oh my gosh. This... This tote bag reminds me of a time when I was really shopping for a tote bag and I just knew deep down it was a bad idea. And I never bought one because not a bad idea. Okay, let me rephrase that. So it's a good idea because at the time it would have been very useful, but I kind of had the feeling that I would buy it, like it, but then keep thinking it's too big. And I also had the concern that I would fill it up with stuff I didn't need to carry with me because it's kind of like when you have a room that is very spacious. We just have a tendency, most people, to just try to fill it up. And I feel like this is what I would do with a, with a bag like that. But that being said, it would have been really useful. I mean, it still could come in handy um, from time to time because, I mean, there's going to be instances when I'm going to want to carry out of necessity. Like for traveling and stuff like that, it would really come in handy, I guess. But moving on, there's this set of five hoops I mean, five sets of hoops for $200 collectively. I would just prefer to buy one set of hoops. I don't know who needs five different kinds, but to me, the quality is very important. I'd rather buy less, uh, not very, but a little more selective about what I'm getting, uh, especially if it's a gift, than uh, having a lot of them. Uh, I tend to be more on the minimalist side when it comes to things, but there's... okay. The one, two, three, four, five, sixth picture on this link for these hoops. This one hoop, it looks like it's missing a piece. I don't, mm, I don't, I don't, I don't like that. I feel like that wouldn't even be comfortable either because it looks kind of heavy. Uh, I would think that this design wouldn't be the most structurally uh wise considering the size of the hoop. I don't know if it's like hollow and like very, very light, but uh I don't like that. I don't know. I, this picture is making me a little nervous. So I, I I, wouldn't get those hoops personally. Like I said, I would try to just get one pair of hoops for someone and just make sure it's something that they can, you know, find versatile for themselves. A pullover and pant. Yeah, I guess that's cool. I guess. Um, I don't know if I would get that one. $118. Maybe it's worth it. I don't know. But I don't think of Spanx as the kind of brand that I would go get this kind of item. I mean, it kind of says that in this description right here. You might know Spanx for its shapewear, but it also does fantastic cozy clothes. Yeah, but there's so many companies that do cozy clothes. There's so many options out there. Why Spanx? I would definitely pass on the, on those. The pet carrier, I guess. I get the feeling that you can get a, a pretty decent one for less though, $149. I think it's kind of cool that this pet carrier is like clear and that you can see through it uh it looks like it might be a pretty good one uh so far on this item there are 377 ratings as of my recording and it's a good average so it looks like a pretty good item if you're in the market for something like this i've never really shopped for this kind of item so i can't say whether i think this price is fair or not i have no idea they have two sizes a small and a large um they have i think the larger one uh, accommodates for pets up to 20 pounds so not bad and they have a couple color options seems that if i order it today it will arrive before christmas at least that's the expectation and that's the thing too when you when you're shopping online you gotta shop uh, earlier because you have to worry about the shipping and things arriving in time that's something to keep in mind so now moving on to the book gifts section uh there's uh they're not all books okay this is not what i was expecting oh there's literally only three options okay so one of them is cards they're like inspiration cards i wouldn't buy that personally it just seems like something i would uh, not really use personally but it looks like it might have some inspiration 50 dollars though for cards inspirational cards why not just follow someone on like social media that posts an inspirational quote every day that'll accomplish the same thing um there's a happiness journal it looks like uh, it was made by oprah her company or whatever i think it's priced fair but would i buy this uh, probably not 
because i rather just have something that just gives me prompts. I mean, this kind of does that, but there's a lot of pictures in there and I... Mm, it's a little cheesy for me, sorry, but that's just how I feel about it. So that's not a lot. There's a story here or books that have a book that has stories. Gosh, that's kind of cool. It says it, that it's a book that features 100 stories of barrier breaking activists, artists, inventors, entrepreneurs, etc. That's cool. So now that section was pretty short. So now it's cozy gifts. Cozy gifts. What is a cozy gift? Something you can snuggle with? A blanket? There's a travel wrap, blanket scarf set some pajamas but it's like a family thing the thing about this though um i guess you pick how many of each because they seem to have like one for males uh one for females like one for kids one for infants and then one for like like a, like a scarf that matches it matches the other ones i mean for your pet and I, I guess they have different sizes for each. How does this work? I'm a little confused. So you pick the type of size, let's say women's, and then you select the size. Oh, there's so many options because, right, they have like all these size options for the for the, the children's ones and for the the adults. And some of them are, I think, already sold out. So I guess people like this. This is kind of a cool gift, I think. I know there's some families that do this thing where they all like wear pajamas, like Christmas pajamas, sometimes matching, sometimes not, but they all do this thing like on Christmas day. My family was not the kind to do that, but uh, we have been given like pajamas as, like my parents did give me pajamas as Christmas gifts at some points. Maybe on more than one occasion. It's kind of cute. Uh, and the prices seem to vary based on what you're getting. Anywhere from four seventy three, I assume that's for like the scarf, to forty dollars and six cents, according to what I'm getting here. They have a few different options. I guess you pick an item and then you add it and then you, you go on and add the item for the next person and so on. Like the next person or pet in your family. Now we have I don't know what this is. It's like a how do I explain this? It's like a metal container. And it has like some kind of like salty looking powder in it. I guess it's for salts. Oh yes, it says here a blend of Epsom and mineral salts, Brazilian white clay and earthy wood notes in these bath salts. I, mm. okay, what? Okay, I just looked at the price. I was just trying to figure out what it was and then I looked at the price. That's a lot, a hundred dollars for bath salts in a fancy tin container. It's not tin, but fancy metal container uh, this one's one this is one that i'm like no i don't think this is worth it no way this costs them like even ten dollars to make i'm very skeptical of it costing even ten dollars i wouldn't surprise if it costs them a lot less to make that so i feel like the margin on this is very high there's only one rating right now and it's a five star and according to this um page it says there's only five left how many did they if you only have one rating and it says only five left in stock how many did they like have in stock to begin with i'm kind of skeptical i think they um probably thought that they wouldn't sell many of them so that there aren't that many so i think it's a little weird but i and the rating it doesn't say it just says five stars oh it says nice package <laughs> comment a bath okay <laughs> uh a bath yeah, I, I don't know if that's a real review or not. It makes me skeptical, but I wouldn't recommend. You can buy a big container of bath salts for a lot less on Amazon. It's just because it has this like fancy container that they're trying to sell it to you for $100. But it, I don't even see evidence of the container being like solid silver or anything that justifies the price that they're trying to charge you for it. I uh, don't, uh, I'm not impressed. And I would not recommend this. Would I buy it? No. In fact, I would be like, <laughs> that's one of the items where I'm like, yeah, right. But the other cozy items, I mean, the pajamas, like I said, that looks kind of cool. I guess the travel wrap, but $199. Okay, I am not paying attention. Okay, I'm sorry. Cashmere. Oh, because it's cashmere. No. Eh. 
I wouldn't buy it either, but uh, maybe someone that likes cashmere and you don't want to buy them a whole sweater might be okay to buy them that. They'll probably like it. Slippers. Okay, this is what I don't get. So there are these like slippers with all that furry lining in it and it looks cozy and comfortable, but my immediate immediate thought when I see them is, okay, but how are you going to deal with them after you've worn them for a while and they kind of like, you know, start to get a little icky because these for example they're sandals right they're sandals so you're assumingly not going to wear them with socks even if you were wearing them with socks but especially because you're not wearing them with socks your feet are going to sweat like how is that how are you going to wash this okay i'm going to click on it because i want to see what what the details say so kind of I don't know if it's steep, but I'd have to look at the materials to see if it's worth it. Would I buy it just by looking at it? Sorry, no. I don't think it's cute. Um, it doesn't actually look... The only reason it looks comfortable like on the surface level is because of the fur on it. But I really don't see it being like a shoe that looks very like supportive. Because that's what I care about. It claims that it has a flexible EVA sole for support and traction. Yeah, that's, that's all fine and well but it's still in the end is a flat shoe you know even it has a cushion and all it doesn't have for someone that has an arch or something i mean i don't know this is this is hard to tell because i can't try it on because it's online um but that's just what i think about when i see these kinds of shoes with that furry lining i just think you know i mean i don't live in a place where it gets super 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 cold where it's like oh yeah i i would really like that you know so maybe that's part of it but that's all honestly all i think about every time i see shoes like that I'm like okay it's furry it's warm especially for this one because it's a sandal you're going to put you're going to just wear it without socks i don't know not for me but but i'm going to see what it says here about how you are supposed to take care of this shoe God, i've always wondered that and i think sometimes i see items like this and it, it just says like spot clean and i'm like okay uh it's gonna get gross at some point and i'm gonna want to do something more than just a spot clean oh okay so someone did ask can these be washed in the washing machine someone answered i don't think you can wash them in the washing machine because they have suede oh that's the thing too they have suede okay suede cannot get wet it gets so messed up it gets wet oh and that's disappointing that they said well when they get ugly i just buy another pair oh, really oh, that sucks I mean, I get it. I guess that's the price you pay for furry sandals, but mm, I don't know. I don't like that. Not not uh, one I would recommend. There's this lounger again, one hundred and nineteen dollars. It I explain to me is it really good like really good fabric or I don't know. I don't even want to click on it. There's these little stuffed animals next to it kind of cute it says heated how does that work you put them in the microwave oh okay someone might like that it says that it has like some lavender scent so some people could find that cozy and relaxing bubble bath 42 dollars why it's literally what i'm so confused is it just the th is it the three bottles together Please tell me it's three bottles to get her. No, it's one bottle for 40, basically $42. And it just has this fancy packaging, but not, no. 33.8. I mean, that's a like 33.8 ounces. It's a decent sized bottle, but I don't, I still don't think it justifies $42. There's three options. I guess there are different scents. Interesting that it says that there's a price drop. <laughs> I guess they realized no one's going to pay 50 something dollars for for that. So now moving on to the kitchen gifts. I see on the like section photo that they have here some of the items right away. First thing I noticed because I like espresso, but espresso doesn't like me um, in the sense of caffeine. They have this uh espresso machine here i just know because i've looked into it i know espresso machines especially good ones expensive if you buy them new and it's the third item listed here 750 dollars. yep i was gonna guess like 700 dollars. i should have guessed to see if i was correct 
I would have been proud of myself. There's a cookie jar here. Uh, it's kind of nice, I guess, for decor reasons, but I can't justify the price. Why is it $148? Oprah, why? It's not even like... Is it is it like vacuum sealed? And even then, I cannot. I cannot. Is it handmade like ceramic? Is it Bluetooth capable? Like, I'm trying to figure out why. Okay, so it says handmade. Okay, I guess I understand that better. Because handmade, making ceramics is no joke. It's a lot of work. And it takes a lot of skill to get something to look like this. So that kind of puts it all in perspective. Someone may like this. I feel like the person that will like this is kind of specific though. Yep, this espresso machine is definitely something that most people won't spring for because it's expensive and it is quite the luxury. It looks like it can steam your milk and it has a self-cleaning function. It's a compatible with alternative milks. I mean, honestly, any of them are. I don't think that's special to this machine. The machine itself is not dishwasher safe. The parts are. <laughs> no one's gonna, no one, I hope, would put the machine in the dishwasher and just be like, okay, do your thing. 60 minute wash, no. They mean the parts. It has a built-in burr grinder. Dang, fancy. You can save your own recipes. You can personalize them on this machine. This is a very bougie machine. If it were me trying to buy an espresso machine and I had the money for it and all that, I would get one where it's not so like hands-off probably. This one's really hands-off. This one's just like pour the coffee grounds in one part and then press buttons and then your espresso comes out. I would want to feel like I'm like pulling the shot and I would want to know what I'm doing in terms of that and like learn that but I understand someone wanting to get one like this to where it's just like easy going and they don't even have to figure that out they just want that espresso at home with the least effort possible there's a few other items I don't really know what cocktail infusion I guess this is for uh, making like alcoholic beverages um i don't know much about that so i'm not going to speak on that set of plates and parchment paper liners these are like oh okay so it seems like it's supposedly a reusable more eco-friendly way to have disposable dinnerware okay here's the thing though uh it's not disposable it's just a uh, basket dinnerware because if it were disposable you could just throw it away, right? But they're saying, oh, it's an eco-friendly way. Yeah, so you mean it's not disposable. You mean it's just like a basket with a liner in it. Oh, wait, no, okay. I'm misunderstanding. I'm cl clearly like assuming things and I'm not reading it carefully. It says that it's uh, including disposable parchment paper liners that you put on top and then you compost the liners. So this is what, something that people don't always know about compostable items is that they're not always actually like compostable sometimes they require like an industrial process like you have to have the those um services available to you and not everybody has that unfortunately so that's something you need to be aware of there's a few other items in here there's one that i cannot i this is to me probably the least justifiable item in this section i mean i know the espresso machine is expensive so most people won't be able to buy that. But at least it's very useful. This one is kind of just dumb in my opinion. And it's this baguette board with a bread knife. Your baguette has to be a certain size. What if your baguette is bigger than this bread board? Oh, and the price too. God, the price. Oh no, Oprah. No, 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 no. $130 for this container with notches on it. I think this is so far the most absurd one I've seen. Ugh, no. I would not put this on my list. 
The other items look pretty average, um, typical uh, kitchen stuff that you probably do. Like this wine chiller. Someone maybe might like that. I wouldn't buy it. Um, Panini Press, $408. It's because it's paired with the toaster and it seems to be like one of those high-tech ones. See, this is to me the kind of thing that is high-tech just for the sake of it. Because uh, you can get really fancy about what you toast, but in the end, is the taste going to be that much different than if you had like a regular toaster doing these things to your waffle, bagel, sliced bread, or Pop-Tart pastry type thing? I have a feeling that's not the case. Now, I could see why someone that, you know, makes, I don't know, food blogs for a living or, you know, does that kind of thing where they want to take that a picture of that perfectly toasted bread and all that. I can kind of see them caring about that and maybe being interested in something like this. But I think the average typical person wouldn't get that. In fact, I think the percentage of people that would get this is even smaller than the percentage of people that would get that uh, espresso machine that's also on this list. Now, there's also a pizza oven here. Pizza ovens are notoriously expensive. This one is $700. I have seen some pretty pretty reasonable ones. Like reasonable in terms of like looks like it could work pretty well for less than that. Like uh, maybe in the $300 to $500 range if I remember correctly. Now, is there one that can do it for less? Probably. I mean, I make pizza in my oven without too many issues. But if you want to really have that like a certain style or type, I can see. And if you make them a lot, I can see why you you would get one um, if you can afford it and all that. Or if you're doing it for like a little small business, like a little farmer's market and you're making pizzas there. I, I can see why you would want to get something like this. But again, for the average person, no. Uh, but moving on to the beauty section, let's see. You have some hair ties, some lip tints. A satin knot turban. Um, I actually try to buy a turban for a while. I try to find something to help my hair look less like unkempt in the morning when I woke up because I have cotton pillowcases. I know I've seen suggestions of getting a satin or uh, what's it called? Silk pillowcase um, to help with that. I have not wanted to spend the money on that yet because I remember having trouble finding one that seem to have um good reviews um so i put that idea on pause and i tried to find a kind of like a turban or like headscarf to wear and i bought two of them and they turned out to be too small and or uncomfortable so i didn't want to keep buying them and i just kind of gave up on that idea but I, it would be cool to find one that would work for me but i think the pillowcase would be the best option for me because just knowing me every time I've ever like tried to wear something like that to bed I it just ends up thrown on the other side of the room I just don't does not stay on my head because I just in my sleep will take it off or I'll move around and it'll slide off or something these body butters $98 for body butters I can't see this being a justifiable price now it's weird because when i clicked on it the price changed so on the link it says 96 dollars at amazon i click on it and it says 120 dollars. what is going on here <laughs> um i guess it's the set if you get the set you get 100 it's 120 um no, oh, but that still doesn't explain the price change. I'm confused. What's going on, Oprah? If you buy two of them, because because uh, uh, two of these are listed as forty eight dollars each, um, that that would come out to ninety six dollars. But the thing is that on the page they have like three boxes stacked and then one on top, and it kind of implies that you can get four of them for ninety six dollars. But that's not the case. And there's no um, explanation. So I don't know what's going on here. I don't know. I think it's cool that they're a little small business. It says it's uh, from a small business brand. 
that's that's all fine and good, but please explain what you mean by moisturizing ingredients. A jewelry cleaner for $22. I have to say, I don't know about that. Do you really need like a special thing for that? I thought you could just use like alcohol or something. It says that it's a hand soap that also cleans your jewelry. So you don't have to take your rings off. Okay, well, what's in it? <laughs> Once again, I'm like, what is in it that you can just use this as a soap and clean your jewelry at the same time? Because in my brain, I think if you need to clean jewelry, you need like rubbing alcohol. You need like something that's going to like, you know, um, bubble up, bubble off the residue and something like that. I, I In my mind, I imagine it would be irritating to your skin because I've never seen a jewelry cleaner that has been used as a hand soap at the same time. And I'm trying to find what is in it. It doesn't say so far. It just says that it's plant-based and non-toxic and that it's easy to use and that it's safe on your metals. I don't know if I would even try this because I just... When a product that comes in a bottle that you put on your skin does not list out the ingredients, I'm skeptical. And especially if it's something that is um, claiming to be used as a personal care product, but also as a cleanser to, you know, something that is not skin. Metal and skin are very, very different surfaces. And I imagine that removing this stuff, uh, you know, the residue at the same time and the metal I have a hard time thinking of a surfactant that will do that but I don't know enough about this cosmetic chemistry stuff so I probably shouldn't be one to speak but um it seems some people like it you know there's some there's some okay ratings here I have yet to see uh what any that say like this was horrible burned my skin but at the same time, there's there's there is a a comment here that's saying that it's overpriced. Yes, I think so too. Um, I agree. I think it's uh, it sounds overpriced. Um, but maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know. This person is saying that it works. He said, "Yeah, it's good, but I wouldn't say it's a must-have." And that's kind of what I thought when I saw it. I that didn't strike me as something like you need this. You know, I mean. Probably most items on this list aren't aren't that level anyway, but yeah. Now for the children's gifts. We've seen gloves, paint by number kit, rain boots, you know, an apron set, but it's a little pricey for a children's apron set in my opinion. $78. Can't you just buy a plain apron and then buy the tools at a craft store? That's what I would do. If I was trying to do something like this, if I was trying to like get that same thing, this would be where I would see this idea and be like, oh, I'm going to do that, but not buy this. Like I said, not buy the exact same item on the list, but kind of get an idea from it. So it's not a bad idea, but um, seems kind of pricey for uh, what you're paying, like what you're getting, I mean. There's a towel here with a little, little hood on it. It's kind of cute. I can see kids liking that. This stem puzzle, it's just a puzzle. Let me see. Oh, this kind of looks like a like a good gift for someone, I mean, that likes puzzles. I was a kid that liked puzzles. There's a picture, a photo of me of when I was a kid and I was putting this puzzle together. It was like a Winnie the Pooh puzzle and it was larger pieces and, and I, I enjoyed those. Now onto the tech gifts. This is the last section. So there's a USB lighter. Okay, someone might use that. You can also use it as a flashlight. Now the MetaQuest 2. Uh, I mean, nah, not for me. But someone who's into this whole metaverse stuff might like this. Now it's kind of steep because $400 is quite a lot to pay for, for that. But I mean, maybe it's justifiable. There aren't, to my knowledge, many ways like options on the market right now to to get into the whole metaverse type situation um right now it's a lot of uh it's just like very few companies there's doesn't not a lot of competition so maybe over time the prices will get better uh maybe someone will like this that is pricey though 
it's like buying a gaming console which kind of makes sense because it kind of it is it's a gaming console right but in virtual reality one okay here there's a steam iron press steam iron you can press your shirt pants this seems like kind of handy it looks like a flat iron but it has a different like shape on the part that uh clamps together i don't know if this would be my first choice like i said it looks like a hair like a flat iron and that can be a little dangerous because if you think about it someone might you know give it away or sell it and then another person will pick it up and they'll think it's for their hair and try to use it for their hair and I feel like this is something that could burn your hair off if you confused it with a flat iron because it lets out the steam and I, I don't know how hot it gets. This is definitely not meant for hair. It was designed for clothes. So that's kind of the, the, the risk with it. But it, it looks like it's uh, made to be very portable, travel friendly, easy to use, convenient, which is a good thing, right? So that's the benefit but I can see this being also a little dangerous in the sense of people not knowing what it is just by looking at it. So for a travel person, this might be a good gift. Seems that some people have liked it according to the ratings. So, oh, I was mistaken. There's actually one more section called home gifts. Oh no, there's more. What? This is tech. Okay, so apparently it's not in order. I got confused. So there's more, there's the home gifts. Now there's an item here that has my attention. It's uh, an emergency pack bundle. And it says, um, it's like a kit for uh, natural disaster outages, that kind of thing. It's saying that it's waterproof and it has essentials like first aid kit, water and more. This is the kind of thing, again, I would look at it and be like, oh, that's smart. Let me make my own. I would make it like a personal challenge to try to like basically compile the same items and see if I can get it under this under this price. This is something that I could see coming in handy in the sense of like you can put it in your car and be ready, you know? So if you're on the go, it's ready, it's there, it's in your, it's in your car and you can uh, use it. Or have one in your house, of course, because you can use it for emergencies. And um, I think it has a cool uh, thought process around it because it involves, you know, preparedness. What they're saying here, it sounds true. It says 60% of Americans do not have an emergency plan. That is alarming. Obviously, you can't always plan for everything. Like there are just some things that you can't even imagine happening and they happen. Um, but it's good to have uh, some kind of plan uh, with your family of what you would do in certain uh, situations. Of course, reasonably focus on the things that you uh, consider to be most likely to happen and you hope won't happen. But um, it's good to have a plan in place, you know, and having things like a first aid kit, some water on hand, you know, those kinds of things are um are good to have and having a, a plan with your family what you would do in certain situations where you will meet and all those things and how you will communicate those are good things to have good things to do so there's a good message and idea behind this gift um and it's just like a quick way to be ready just buy this bag and and you're good right so now i want to move on to some more items i kind of want to scroll through these a little bit because i don't know how many things have wowed me i can't say there are many that have in the wellness gift section, there's, I feel like there's always like an eye pillow. Is it just me or is there always like an eye pillow option in every like gift guide? I own an eye pillow and I've used it like maybe three times. One of the times I used it, um, I got like an eye infection like shortly after. And then I was like, wait, is it, was it the eye pillow or <laughs> So I hadn't used it since then, but, um, I mean, that's always something I notice. There's like always an eye pillow in, in <laughs> like every gift guide. It can come in handy, I suppose. It's not a bad gift, especially for someone who travels. Now, where are the food gifts section? This is what I'm talking about. Food gifts, food gifts. But this is the thing. So in these gift guides on the food gift section, there's usually like those like 
like sets like jams and jellies that are a little bit odd they're never like just regular jam and jelly it's always like i don't know peppermint jalapeno mango jelly and it's like uh, i don't know how many people will eat that and then the salami ones like i've seen some that have these like salami and like pepperoni sets and some interesting like beef jerky adjacent type of items in there cheese dips um those kinds of things so like for example this one it's like i said it's a jam set 55 dollars for three jams how many is that how much is that for each comes out to 1833 per jam that's some premium jam that's some very premium jam i think once again i would just pick jams that i know this person likes like i know they like I know they like uh, strawberry. I'll get them a good strawberry jam. I know they like grape. I'll get them a good grape jam. And I wouldn't just get them the jam. I would get them like some crackers to go along with the jam. And if they're into like peanut butter or almond butter or something like that, I'd get something like that. And I'd put it in a box. So it'd be like a little snack set, you know, you know, uh, nut butter and jam snack set. And I would pair them together. That's what I would do. Um, rather than buy this one. But I mean, maybe it's really good. $68.5 dollars though. Why is it so much for maple syrup? Again, I would just get maple syrup I like. But I guess that's the whole thing, right? You're trying to give a gift, so you're trying to make it look like, I'm not just giving you maple syrup. I'm not just giving you, you know, Mrs. Butterworth's. I'm giving you a fancy maple syrup. But I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. Hot chocolate gift crate. I like hot chocolate. I actually, okay, I made hot chocolate recently and I was underwhelmed because it wasn't chocolatey enough for me. I like a darker, I like to taste like the deep notes of chocolate in my hot chocolate. I want some sweetness in there, but I I really want it to feel like I'm drinking chocolate. And when I drink some of these hot chocolate mixes that I've tried lately, it doesn't really, it barely tastes like chocolate. It's just sweet, milky, hot beverage. And I mean... Some people like that, but I like my chocolate. I like to taste it. So I've actually in the past when I made hot chocolate, I've literally gotten a chocolate bar and chopped it up and like melted it and then put it in the milk um, to get it to where I, um, it has a flavor that I like. Um, because uh, like I said, most of these like hot chocolate mixes, they just, they're not chocolatey enough for me. Not for what I like. This is interesting. So they're selling a sweet potato cake i've never heard of sweet potato cake um i've had carrot cake i've had pumpkin bread i've had sweet potato pie i've had sweet potato empanadas but i've never heard of sweet potato cake how does that work okay so here it says shipped in a cooler with dry ice you know you got to make sure that they're um around when they receive the package and it's not going to sit out there i know the dry ice will keep it really well for a long time but that's something you got to keep in mind you don't want to send it and then find out that they're on vacation for the rest of the week and <laughs> the cake just sits there you know i think it's cool that you can uh send a cake like that that's cool we've gotten to that level of uh technology and logistical uh systems that we can manage to do that i've been seeing these like at stores and it's on this list panettone so it this one is a certain version of panettone and it's like an italian sweet bread every time i see them i think they look dry are they supposed to be dry i assume so because it's supposed to conserve for a long time right on the on the shelves in the stores and make it to your house and still be edible but i'd be willing to try some kind of panettone because i keep seeing it everywhere i'm like what is this thing there's a movie night trio popcorn box now i like popcorn i've actually been eating it a lot lately i like to pop my own popcorn i like to buy the popcorn that's already popped the kind that you put in the microwave is not usually my favorite i don't think i found one there i'm like this is perfect i've seen someone that i've gotten like reasonably close like okay but um in comparison to popping it myself in a in a pot with a lid or with a Another method I like to use is putting aluminum foil with and then poking some holes in there um, and, and use uh, the oil that I have. At. And I don't even use anything extremely fancy. You know, I can just use regular 
canola oil, vegetable oil, or, or avocado if I want to be a little more selective. Um, it can, it can uh, yield a, a decent popcorn, pretty good popcorn actually, better than the, than the stuff that you can buy that, that gets popped in a bag. Um, so this, this popcorn box trio, it's steeply priced and I wonder why. I'm going to look at it. It's claiming to be high quality. Now, funny, there's one rating here and it says one star. Why is that? Let's read it. Glass broken and all over the place. Oh no, that's terrible. You do not want to buy something like this and then it just arrive all broken and that's not good. Wow. Okay, so the, the popcorn comes in these glass containers, which is a little risky, right, to be shipping. Um, if you're going to be shipping something like that, you want to make sure it's really um, packaged correctly and has, you know, um, all the right labeling on it so that it's um, taken care of properly and all that. And this person is saying that the glass was all broken and, you know, um, it's delaying their gift because it, it um, you know, is uh, broken. They can't, they can't give this away as a gift as, you know, that's, uh, that's upsetting. And um, that's the only review on this. My guess is that this hasn't sold. Maybe a few people bought it and, but not many because there's only one rating here and it's a $75 box of some, uh, popcorn. It has, uh, one type of popcorn and this type of oil. It looks like it's a peppercorn infused oil and the popcorn is an uh, heirloom variety. That sounds nice, but that doesn't sound like $75 to me. And maybe I'm wrong because of the oil, but looks like it hasn't had a lot of uh, satisfaction in terms of the people that have bought it. At least that one person that mentioned um, didn't like it. So, and there only being one review makes me think very few people have bought it. So that's a shame, but uh, again, a good a gift idea. Buy them uh, some nice popcorn. You can find some heirloom varieties out there and someone who likes popcorn might, might enjoy that if... if um, if that's something that they'll enjoy. There's a set of olive oils for $150. Um, four different kinds of olive oils that are infused with lemon, garlic, basil. Mm. Sounds like it's for a very specific person. I don't know how big these like oil infusion things are at, in the culinary world right now. Um, I assume they're having somewhat of a moment because we've seen a few like items that include these whole infusion idea they've got to be good though because you're paying a really high price for these they the infusion has to be like on the spot like not on the spot but it has to be on point um to justify this and the quality of the oil has to be you know really up there it's got to be um like some extra virgin olive oil from non, I don't know, non-GMO oil or olive uh, trees or something, you know. And it's saying that it, it's um, it's carefully selective olives grown in, by a family-run farm in California. I, you know, I, I see this and I think I would want to buy these separately. Like I would want to buy one. They're trying to sell me on it. I just want one. I just want one. Okay, it looks like it, there's only two options. You either buy the set of four or you buy the set of two. And the set of two comes with, they're just, they're not infused. They're just regular olive oils. Not regular, but like they're not infused olive oils. They're two different flavor, flavor profiles according to this this better be very good yeah like i said it would be cool if they they sold just one like if you just could get just that one specific one that you think the person will like and you have the option of the set but you don't have to buy the set there's a chocolate gift box okay chocolates these are interesting because they don't look like your typical chocolate box it looks like you have some some fruits that are dipped in chocolate and um, they're like dried fruits and it looks like they may be good, taste-wise. Um, they claim to be gourmet. Now, I'm looking at the reviews. Eh, they're, like, lukewarm. One person liked it. Another person liked it. This person said damage. Unfortunately, I guess it didn't ship well, and it, some of them broke. That sucks. 
uh, another person liked it, another person liked it. Uh, one person said disappointed because it didn't look as good as it did in the picture. See, that's the thing. Immediately, oh, wow, that's disappointing. I mean, admittedly, they don't have the best lighting, but there's so much staging in those in those pictures. If your staging is really too over the top in comparison to what the actual product is, you're just going to end up guaranteeing some disappointment. And I think that's what's happening with this person. Um, they took a picture. It doesn't look that great. Um, it doesn't look terrible, but it doesn't look as good as it looks in the picture. It's such a stark contrast in my opinion. And then theirs as well, they mentioned that a lot of the pieces were broken, which is another complaint from another review that I saw. And they also said that for the price and being selected as a favorite things item, they expected more. Yeah, I would, I would agree with you if that happened to me. Well, there's the, the first review that comes up, um, says that only one of them Oh, no, sorry. They only tasted one and so far good. You know, that's kind of funny. They should have tried more of the chocolates before they <laughs> wrote their review because that would have been a little more helpful, you know, just like, oh, I ate one. Good. It's like, okay, well, what about the rest? Oh, I haven't eaten them yet. Well, okay, maybe write your review later. <laughs> they were good, but um, they'll come back and, and, and update us. So <laughs> this review was posted a couple of days ago. I don't know if they're going to update. I don't know how many people remember to do that kind of thing, but... So that's the end of this gift guide. This has gone on much longer than I thought. I didn't think I'd talk about this. I didn't even go through every single item. There are many items here. I didn't see where it said how many items are listed. Maybe at the top it says something about that. I kind of just skimmed it because I just wanted to go straight in. And no, it doesn't say here how many items. And I'm not going to count them, but there's a, there's a good amount of ideas. This might help somebody out there figure out what they want to do. Maybe a few of these items someone might actually buy. As I mentioned before, I tend to use these gift guides as like an ideas place. Um, something that'll kind of um, get my, you know, creative juices flowing and kind of, um, you know, might remind me of something else. Like let's say uh, those earrings, those pearl earrings that I saw earlier. Maybe I think, oh, I don't know about those. But oh, but I remember, you know, she wanted... Um, dangly earrings with this i remember she liked them at that at that uh, little market we went to maybe i can find something like that you know that is the kind of thing that um i will use this guide for um if i were you know kind of trying to think about what to get somebody so i'm gonna link it in the show notes for anyone who's interested in looking at this um list i hope you enjoyed this review of oprah's favorite things um I maybe this will help you and and uh, if if you don't find this uh, list gift guide list helpful maybe check out some of the other ones out there I mean there are many uh, you know magazines and news articles out there where you can find some ideas and um, of course the best thing is to like know the person pretty well that's the most helpful if you feel like you need a little help maybe ask somebody else they know you know what do you think though they'll like if you're still thinking of what you're going to get somebody um you know as i kind of mentioned it it doesn't really um you know um well i don't know actually if i mentioned this but i really do think that it's a thought that counts when it comes to gift giving i really am of the belief that you don't need to spend a lot of money to show the recipient that you care and that you were thinking of them when you picked out uh, a gift for them and just being thoughtful is what is most important. So knowing the person, knowing what their needs are, knowing what they um, what they like, what they don't like, what they if it's a food item, what they can eat, what they can't eat, um, that kind of thing uh, can make a difference, and it can help you figure out what to get somebody. And um, just being thoughtful is what is most important. So with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you, everyone. I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye.